Office of Point Affairs Committee on Beneficiary Advocacy and Empowerment. I understand that we have no excused absences. Nathan, can I please have a roll call for attendance? Nathan? Oh, I'm sorry, Sherry, he's having some sound difficulties. Let me take over. Thank you so much, Mark. Trustee Ahuna? Ew. Trustee Akina? Aloha, my Kako. Trustee Alapa? Present. Trustee Galateria? Ew. Trustee Lindsay? Here. Trustee Souza? Ew. Trustee Trask? Present. Trustee Waihe. Present. And Shara Kaka. Ew. Nine, yes. Mahalo, Mark. Welcome to the meeting of the Committee on Beneficiary Advocacy and Empowerment. Trustees and the Oha Kapohana who are joining by video conference, please enable your camera if you're able to do so, and mahalo all who already have done that. Trustees and all in attendance, we're reminded to conduct ourselves with decorum and must respect the speaker recognized by the chair during our meetings and set forth in Article 17 in order and decorum of the OHA BOT bylaws. Further, any defamatory materials and statements are not to be presented before the BOT or its committees. Joining the trustees today is our Kapohana along with various support staff. I will now call upon our Kapohana to introduce the administrative staff also joining us today. Aloha Kakahiaka Chair and Trustees. Joining us today are Interim Corporation Counsel Everett Ota, Interim Senior Legal Counsel Nichi Ozawa, Chief Advocate Kyopu Rilitz, Public Policy Manager Chantel Belay, IT Systems Engineer and Administrator Daniel Santos, and IT Systems Engineer and Administrator Arlene Aguinaldo. Mahalo Chair. Mahalo Kapohana. We will now proceed on to Roman numero number two, new business under section A. And I also want to um, share the notice, the 72 hour rule pursuant to OHA BLT operations manual. Section 49 shall be waived for distribution of new committee materials. Mark, are there any testifiers on this item? Uh, we had one testifier sign up, but I don't see her on the attendees. So um, we'll let you know if she logs on for the later items. Mahalo. I will now yield the floor to Kapohana at this time. Mahalo, Chair. At this time, I would like to ask our Chief Advocate, Kyopu Rilitz, to provide trustees with an update of the 2024 OHA State Legislative Bill Package Matrix 1. Mahalo, Kapohana and Chair. Um, so we are in the final, this is, we can finally call it the final stretch of the legislative session. Um, we are in conference committee and to get us started, what I'd like to do um, is have Chantel bring up the calendar so we all can sort of have a visual of what that looks like. So where it is, the date is April 17th. So we are smack dab in the middle of the first week of what we call conference committee. And so folks, for just for a quick reminder, conference committee is where anything, any bills that have gotten through all of their subject matter and if they had fiscal or judiciary um, referrals, got through all of those committees. Um, and there's still disagreements between the two chambers. Um, so this is where the, the two chambers come together, um, identify which members, uh, managers or, you know, there are different terms for it, but basically members of a committee from that will represent both the Senate and the House, and they'll come together um, on each of the bills, um, assuming that conferees are assigned and um, they, they do meet, and they'll try to find some common ground to see if they can pass um, a good bill. Uh, so that is where we are in the very first uh, week. I will say that this year, um, what we've seen so far in conference committee is the first three days have been really focused on the budget, um, which is pretty common, um, trying to be on what the what sort of what the legislature has to sort of to divvy out for um, fiscal bills um, it requires that they have already balanced the budget in the in the budget bill, which is HB 1800 this year. Um, so we've seen quite a number of, we've seen three, well, two so far, and then there'll be another convening of that budget conference committee um, today 
uh, I believe this afternoon. Um, so we'll see those continue to, to come together and find out where Senate and House disagree and we'll hope to have a final budget or something near a final budget um, by the end of this week. Uh, we have started to see conferees be assigned on both the House and Senate sides, um, but I will say that there, it hasn't, there hasn't been sort of the, the big floodgates opening. It's just been a, a sort of a trickling of conferees being assigned. Um, so we're still in somewhat of in the early phases of conference committee. Um, and it'll really rev up by the end of this week and then into next week. We all bills will have to have sort of a good draft, a settled draft that's been voted on and agreed upon um, by members of both of the chambers by next Friday. That's what final decking is. Um, typically, I, the happens like at five by five or 6 p.m. is usually the deadline so that they can file it um, by the evening. So that is where we are in conference committee. Um, I'll take I'll stop pause here in case there's any questions about where we are um, before we jump into matrix one. Mahalo Kyoku members are there any uh, questions or comments I see Trustee Galateria has to stand up. Yeah Kyoku you guys in the budget conference now what's the uh... They're probably just trimming the sales at this particular point. So what what is it? Uh, where where are they now? What is it? Fourteen billion, fifteen? How much is it? I I'd have to check. I haven't looked at the but I haven't looked at the bottom of the budget. I've just been sort of scrolling through to see what we're interested in and what's getting in. So mm -hmm. I'd have to look to see what it is. But they are sort of trimming and deciding what can stay and what can't go. And it is sort of it is like really a trickling at this point. We've I've only seen I think yesterday's conference committee meeting was like twelve minutes long. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Correct, so but I'd have to, I can check on that for you though. Okay, they're pretty close, but when you do have a chance, go do that and then send it to me, please. Okay, thank you, Chair. You can know. Oh, hello. Members, any other questions or comments regarding the calendar? All right, seeing none, Kyoko, if you can please continue. Thank you. Great, mahalo. Um, and we will be sure to get that to you. I just took a note of that, Trustee Galuteria. Um, so on matrix one, um, I am very happy to announce that we have gotten through um, both in the House and the Senate, we had single referrals for OHA 2, which is the cultural appropriateness reso. Um, and that has passed through um, both the single House and Senate committees. Um, the Senate committee hearing was last week um, and it passed unamended. And because I believe it was completely unamended, but it certainly was unamended from the Senate, um, it will, it should, barring some uh, wild thing happening, which I can't imagine happening, it should be passing and being transmitted to the governor fairly shortly. So OHA2 um, has passed all of the major hurdles that it needs to um, and looks like it'll be enrolled to the governor soon. Um, I will pause there. Anything else has been sort of dead for a while now, but if anyone has questions on OHA2, I'm happy to take any questions. Members, questions or comments? Seeing none, if you can continue, mahalo kiopu. Great, that's about all we have for Matrix 1 and the updates for Matrix 1. Mahalo, we will now move on then to Matrix 2. Mark, are there any testifiers for this item? Uh, still no testifier. Mahalo, I will now yield the floor back to kiopu. Mahalo, Chair. So for Matrix 2, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you'll remember the last time we met regarding Matrix 2, um, we had uh, quite a number of resos that were added that named OHA. Um, additionally, we had moved um, what was then OHA 4 over to OHA uh, or to Mat OHA 4 over to Matrix 2 from Matrix 1. Um, I will say that pretty much all of the items that were um, that were naming OHA in resos have not passed the hurdles that it needed to get through to this point, this stage. Um, so we are looking at the only living um, item as far as uh, on matrix two is item 12 as well. And um, my plan was to sort of start to ask around to see if there's any um, interest in this moving forward. This was, if folks will remember, um, was, Late in the game last year, um, there was a move to add the the Hakone um, and Kukani local language um, from the 
the OHA bill um, was inserted into this House bill. So it is the only one that survived to conference last session. So it is therefore still alive this session. I haven't heard of any movement, um, but I was planning on um, poking around a little bit this week as I head down to the Capitol. But otherwise, no other updates. So, but happy to take any questions. Hello, members. Are there any questions or comments regarding Matrix Two? All right. Okay. We'll now move on then to Matrix Three. Mark, do we have any testifiers on this item? Uh, Chair Akaka, there are no uh, testifiers for this item. Okay, Mahalo, Nathan. <laughs> I will now yield the floor back to Kyofu. Mahalo. So for matrix um, three, I wanted, there was just, I wanted to give some highlights, but before I do it, I wanted to draw your attention to one item that we would like to recommend a change in position. That is item 61. Um, so Chantel, if you could go to um, item 61. Uh, so this item, what we're looking at is SB 3202. Um, so we had previously had this flag, this high monitor. Um, I've been, uh, and our team have been watching this bill sort of from afar. Um, it has changed pretty dramatically over the course of the legislative session, which is one of the reasons we sort of have held back. And we ha did have some conversations with Rep Edlin early in the um, early in the legislative session about this specific measure. Um, in its most current draft, it is it has been largely gutted. Um, a lot of the provisions that advocates were looking for um, have been taken out. But in the just recent draft before it was gutted, um, there was essentially two components that we were interested in providing comments on. The first um, was that it would provide for essentially like a, a statewide norm for uh, allowances for ADUs to support um, uh, folks being able to build additional ADUs on their property and uh, or accessory dwelling units, excuse me. And then the uh, second was um, it would allow essentially smaller lots to be subdivided into even smaller lots, um, legally subdivided, thus being able to alienate or sell them. And so there, you know, when we've had discussions about these internally about this bill, um, you know, I, there is, we appreciate and see alignment in the way in which this bill um, addresses the need for housing and the way in which housing is one of the largest expenses for families and especially Native Hawaiian families and how that can often drive some of our Native Hawaiian families to leave Hawaii. Um, so we appreciate sort of that push toward that, but do sort of express some concern about the way in which the, the subdivision of uh, the further subdivision of land um, and making it easier to alienate or sell land uh, by or from Native Hawaiian families is concerning absent the insertion or the, in the a, a sort of a complementary effort to provide financial um, assistance to families. Um, and so that's, so we essentially provided a comment we didn't support or, um, or, um, uh, or oppose, but just wanted to sort of provide some food for thought for the committee um, in a previous hearing. Um, we did identify that the, the board had not yet taken a position, but that we were going to recommend this position change. Um, so uh, I just wanted to flag that for folks, answer any questions that folks might have. At this point, it is looking like it, it, they took out the ADU provision, they took out the subdivision provision, or extremely watered down the subdivision provision. So at this point, it's largely gutted. And so we would continue to monitor um, in case any of those provisions came back in for the um, during conference committee. But we are recommending a change from high monitor to comment. And I'm happy to take any questions on that item before I proceed to some highlights. Madam Chair. Yes, Board Chair Lulimpi. Um, I have a question. Does it involve um, Hawaiian homes lands? Because no. some of the lots, some of yeah. the lots are very large, like one acre, and it could, it could be subdivided for family members. I just wondered if there was any inclusion in this bill for that purpose. This one is specifically urban, I believe, urban areas, um, not pastoral or um, larger lands. 
in the more countryside. But um, Kyopu, if you would like to further clarify that. Sure. So, so there was, that is actually a very good question. Um, my understanding was it would not impact it. And one of the reasons I know that is because some of the conversations DHHL was there. Um, I do think there was some um, interest in sort of supporting the ADU. I'm not sure that it would necessarily apply to DHHL, but DHHL recognizing the need for housing being that agency. So my understanding was it sort of to the point it did not, um, but I did wanna let you know that DHHL um, had been in some conversations with the advocates who are lead on this bill about how it might impact or, or what might look good um, or promising for DHHL and their policies moving forward. Thank you. Mm. Mahalo, members, any other questions? Oh, yes, I see Trustee Valeria. Yeah, follow up uh, question on uh, what uh, Trustee, Lindsay was asking, what is, for the benefit of the board, give some clarity on what urban development is. What are the boundaries? How far does it go? Uh, does it go past Kapolei? Is it basically the urban core? Give us some an idea. No, thank you for that question. That's a really important question that we internally had conversations, you know, I had quite a bit of conversations, I will um, say, I, I feel very fortunate to have had quite a bit of conversations with Kuike, um, the our director of Wevi Wellbeing and Aina Momona. Um, and when you look at urban, the, what constitutes urban, the vast majority of Oahu is, is urban. Oh, wow. um, and so if you look all the way up the in particular, and I think probably close to the close to the heart for myself as a, a, a woman born and raised in Ko'olaupoko, all the way up the, the or I think all, if not most of the way up the windward side is designated urban. Um, and so that's one of the concerns, right, for Waimanalo, which is one of the highest concentrations, or I think actually the highest concentration of native Hawaiians at this point. Um, and if that would allow for the further subdivision, then we did have some concerns about whether or not if you have to subdivide, if you if you as a family have the ability to subdivide and sort of essentially help yourself financially, and then it the hope would be that you'd be able to sell it to family or to another native Hawaiian, but if native Hawaiians aren't able to afford the down payment, then that might end up essentially pricing Hawaiians out of, you know, further subdivided lots. And that was the concern we just wanted to raise that, you know, these kinds of, of, of policies are really promising, but they have to be matched with the finance, the financial assistance that native Hawaiians need if it is to support native Hawaiians um, being able to achieve home ownership. Okay, so just to be clear, the entire island or the vast majority of the island of Oahu is defined as urban and that the legislature recognizes that. It's, I should say, maybe it's not, I would say a significant portion, even parts where I thought were going to be rural were, sure. would be urban. And that is one of the reasons why you saw the uh, Honolulu Council City, city, and um, city and county, county council um, actually had a reso to oppose the measure, mm -hmm. um, and so that's why you had. But every other county actually supported it. Well, I should say, every other county mayor um, and their administration supported it, but not city and county. I see. Okay, Mahalo. Thank you, Chair. Well, well real quick, this sounds like a Kauai bill. Is that most of Kauai? All of this. Um, my understanding, well, so it was the um, the it was the brainchild in part of Rep. Evslin, so it is a Kauai bill. Oh, I yeah. I know why. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you for that question. I have forgotten about to mention that, so thank you. I just want to add um, uh, to to Trustee Galateria that project in Wailuku that we attended for the groundbreaking. That's an er that's an urban area, but Waiohuli would be considered a rural area in Maui. Mahalo, members. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Mahalo. So I just wanted to highlight, since I did mention we were in conference committee, we are shifting gears a little and have prioritized. I mean the. A lot of the same bills that I've been giving you updates on over the course of the legislative session, but I just wanted to let you know where we are at on a couple of the bills that have been higher priority for us. So I'll start with item 23, which is SB 2305. 
This is the silver alert one. Um, we will be working with the Alzheimer's Association. So they have been the essentially the lead advocate on this bill. Um, and so we will continue to work with them to ensure that we're getting, you know, helping provide um, whatever kind of influence would be helpful. Um, I will, our practice has been that we work with either the department or the lead advocate on any of these um, bills that we've identified as higher priority um, and sort of help work with them to be as effective as we can in our advocacy. Um, at this point for the higher priorities, we are planning to do um, a conference uh, committee memo. And so it's similar to testimony, though testimony isn't technically, um, there's not like an open portal for testimony, um, but we will be filing conference committee memos with the conference, the conferees once they're assigned for each of the bills. Um, so item 23, the silver alert, we will be working with closely with Alzheimer's Association, who's been a good partner um, in helping bring us along on this one. Um, I'll jump to item 28 which is HB 2074. So this is that Kayapuni bill that we've been watching um, for the whole session um, and trying to work very closely with Ahakauleo. Um, right now, one of the things, I will say that I have met with um, a, a DOE and their policy shop, um, because again, they would be lead on this. Um, this item, so just for a little bit of background, this was originally, this was a board approved, a board, board of education approved um, budget item that did not make it into the governor's budget. Um, and so this bill was one way to, that I think advocates wanted to still get the, the positions, the staffing that Kayapuni desperately needs. Um, and so be, because it's a board approved measure, um, DOE can actually continue to advocate for it. So that's why I've been in touch with them. Um, one of the things that we are actually hoping for is that we don't need to see this bill move forward. Instead, that it will get into the base budget. Um, so that's one of the things that we've been monitoring um, that budget conference committee um, set of meetings because we want to see if um, DOE's provided us which lines we're looking for. So we make sure that we find and get to know whether or not that's going to be in the budget. That would be much more preferable because then it just gets in the budget and we know that it's there year after year after year. We don't have to worry about it sunsetting or, or having to go back for more positions later. Um, I will say that at this point, folks are feeling like the 10 teaching positions seem like they have the best chance that the three um, curriculum specialist positions may or may not go anywhere. Um, but we are fighting hard for all 13, um, but just wanted to sort of manage expectations that we're hearing that the 10 is more likely. Um, we will continue to be in contact with DOE um, as well as Ahaka Oleo. I've been in pretty, pretty regular contact with um, both of those. Um, to make sure that we're coordinating our advocacy um, to be as effective as possible. And then our the next item I wanted to bring to your attention was item 67. Item 67 is HB 2690. So this was the, um, the measure in which, um, so it originally started as the VAI policy coordinator. Um, the VAI policy coordinator um, was supposed to work to help you know, essentially lead us in, you know, as a state through um, all of the mitigation efforts that need to happen with Red Hill. Um, we had had that item as high monitor. Um, and then when it crossed over to the Senate, um, the contents of another bill were inserted into HB 2690 and it is related to water. Um, so it was relevant to the, um, the description um, and the title of the bill. And so in this, we see that sea worm, if you folks will remember that Com uh, Commission on Water Resource Management um, set of provisions that would essentially take the Commission on the Water on Water Resource Management out from direct um, uh, oversight by DLNR and make an attached agency, as well as create an executive director, which would be hired, basically hired and fired by the commission rather than a political appointee. Um, and the board had recommended supporting with amendments. Um, and if just as a quick reminder, um, we had we did provide the support as well as requested an amendment um, for adding OHA to the nominating committee. And in its current draft, HB 2690 does have OHA being added to the nominating committee for the Commission on Water Resource Management. The other thing that we're hoping to work with um, conference 
committee members on is uh, shortening. There's a provision that would allow the commission to establish or to declare a, an emergency. And right now it's set as a default of one year and we'd like to see it a little bit shorter, something like six months, um, just to make sure that there's sort of regular check-ins or oversight by the commission on, on what's happening in any, in any given area. Um, but at this point, it's looking like it's moving forward um, and we'll continue to keep you apprised in BAE meetings as we move forward. And then the final set of items I wanted to bring to your attention was um, item 50 and item 68. Um, so if you want to go to item 68, Chantel. Um, so item 50 quickly was SB 3154, which strengthens the enforcement abilities for DLNR with regard to archaeological activities. Um, and allows them to better enforce failure to adhere to mitigation plans. And then SB 2591, which is the one you're looking at, um, uh, item 68, this is the one that had changed quite a bit um, and in its current form would require property owners to, um, uh, uh, would require property owner owners to uh, record with the Bureau of Conveyance um, any known burials um, on their property, and if they fail to do so, that there would be a fine. Um, <clears throat> both of these together uh, represent burial sites, working group bills, um, or these kinds of strengthening of historic preservation or protections for EV kupuna. Um, and we are, you know, I've been working closely with our compliance program. Uh, and I didn't realize this, but this is the farthest some of these bills have come, which is very exciting. Um, so we are very excited to put our efforts and our, our time behind moving these to the finish line because we feel like these are good first steps um, to better protecting our EV kupuna. Um, we have been in contact with Senator Shimabukuro, who has always been a lead on these bills. Um, her staff have let me know that it looks like the Senate conferees are going to be good to go once they're released by leadership. Um, I still have to check in with, um, I, I did have a conversation with Representative Tarnas um, as well, so he knows that these are high on our priority list. Uh, but at the time he had when we met, there hadn't been uh, movement on any conferees at that point. Um, so I did wanna flag this for you. Also wanted to let you know that in, in our, in furtherance of trying to get these two bills um, past the finish line, um, Kamakana Ferreira, who is um, our com lead compliance specialist, and myself will be um, meeting with Civil Beat tomorrow for an interview to hopefully get some much needed attention um, to this, these two bills in particular, but you know, broadly to the, to greater protections for our EV kupuna. Um, so that is, I gave you sort of, I just gave you the highlights of the one of sort of our top five, like that we're going to spend the most amount of time on in the next week and a half. I'm happy to take questions on those or any other bills, um, but wanted to pause here um, and see if there's any questions on those or any of the other bills. Members, any questions or comments? Let's be galateria. Thank you, Chair. I got a couple of, one question, maybe a comment or two, but this is with regard to burial sites. So bear in mind, Kiopu, that, uh, you know, I sit on one of the burial councils. And prior to that, I was on the other side of the table with Kwehau. So I see both sides. I think that after, when all is said and done, this is a part of tightening up of the statute, the original statute. But when we're done with this stuff, I'm hoping that uh, OHA can take a big part in recalibrating the statute itself because it is subject to a lot of different interpretations. It's not tight enough. So every burial council, if the chair so chooses, will interpret the statute a certain way, which will put a lot of people in, in jeopardy, even though they do uh, com comply with everything involved. So what I'm sharing with the board and what I'm sharing with you, Kiopu, is when we powered this one, perhaps we might want to take a look at the statue itself and how we can tighten that up so it's not so subject to personal interpretation. Okay. And then secondly, um, I, I wanted to just comment on, on uh, regenerative tourism. Uh, I've always felt that OHA should get more involved in the uh, visitor industry, the number one industry in Hawaii. But as if, do you feel that as if uh, 2859 SB gonna, gonna prevail? 
You know, I, um, if you asked me earlier in the session, I would probably say no, maybe. Um, it's item 27, um, Chantel, but um, trustee, you know, I actually think there's a chance. I do. This is one of the few that has gotten one chamber's conferees actually assigned um, publicly and released. So, um, you know, I, at this point, I feel like it, it uh, of of some of the other bills that we're following, it probably has a better chance. I'm not sure if I would say that it has a, a good chance, but I, I do think that it has a better chance given that I know it has a very strong backing by um, by Senate leadership, mm -hmm. essentially, or I should say those who those who have influence in the Senate. I see. OK, so let me just conclude by saying if it does prevail, Kapohan, I think what we need to do is clearly identify where OHA is in the visitor industry tourism continuum. Okay, and we're not just about raffia skirts and coconut bras. And I'm saying, I mean, we need to be clearly engaged in the visitor uh, experience, whether that be on the destination management side, whether it be on the uh, marketing side, really doesn't matter. We just must be present to win is what I'm saying. Okay, um, so just Mahalo kind of bear that in mind because I'm keeping my eye on that particular one too. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, and Kyopu, um, I'd also like to just add on to Trustee Galuteria's um, comments that we should look for alignment within Mana i Mauliola to ensure that um, that we are, are staying in alignment. Mahalo. Trustee Chat. I had a question for this, maybe Keopu can answer, but when I looked at this measure, it really imposes, uh, we're looking at private landowners and a requirement that they disclose. But right now, my understanding, Keopu, is that the state itself does not have to do this in terms of ceded lands. Do you have a comment on that? You know, that's a good question and I do not have the answer, but I will check in with our team and, and find out because I, I don't actually know the answer to that on, at this moment. If you could do that, I'd really appreciate it because I did get some follow-up from folks on Big Island on this. Uh, they support the bill, but they wanted to know why it is that the state land owners are not required to do the same thing as the private land owners and they pointed out to me that the state itself is the curator of many documents that might be related to historic properties. So I would be interested in following up on this because if we're gonna impose it on private landowners, we should at least check to see if we're doing it ourselves. Yes, I'm sure there are other mechanisms, but that is a good question that I don't have the answer for at this moment. So um, I will be sure that we follow up on that because I think that's a very important um, component. And I do no. just want to mention, sorry, Trustee Galuteria, I did take notes on um, the other feedback you provided. So thank you very much, Trustee Galuteria. Mahalo. Members, any other questions or comments? Okay. Kyoku? Okay, I believe that is it as far as the specific bills I wanted to highlight. Um, but I do want to let folks know that we'll be we'll be keeping I believe we, we're supposed to have another BAE meeting next week. So hopefully we'll have um, some follow-ups for us on, on some of these bills. Um, as I had mentioned, just a, a quick reminder that we are in the first week of conference. And so that's really focused on the budget. Um, so the, the it'll start to get much faster and more furious um, in the next few days. And so I, ho I hope to have some more um, good updates for you next week. Akil, also, um... Did you want to share about um, the meeting on violence against women? I can't. Did you want to share? Did you want to wait till announcements or? Um, sure. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. I have the motion up. Madam Chair. Yes. 
I'd like to move to approve administration's revisions on matrix three. 2024 OHA State Legislature Bill positions related to measures affecting Native Hawaiians dated April 17th, 2024. Item 61, SB 3202, SD2, HD1 from high monitor to comment. Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Any other questions or comments, members? Seeing none, can I please have a roll call vote? Castillo Huna. Aye. Trustee Aquino. Aye. Trustee Alapo. Aye. Trustee Galuterio. Aye. Board Chair Lindsay. Aye. Trustee Souza. Aye. Board Vice Chair Trask. Aye. Trustee Waihei. Yes. Chair Akaka. Aye. Nine yes votes, motion passes. Mahalo, Nathan. Moving on now to announcements. Um, members, are there any announcements? Okay, um, we do have our um, Committee on Resource Management meeting today at 1.30. And uh, Kyoko, if you wanted to share um, on the meeting on violence against women. Sure, just a quick announcement that administration, uh, myself and uh, Director of OEV Wellbeing, Aina Momona, um, met with uh, one of the political appointees, so high, fairly high ranking me member of the Office on Violence Against Women. Um, it was a good meeting. Uh, there's lots of sort of exchange. Um, we sh I had shared some of, um, I both actually at both I and myself and Kuike shared quite a bit about our experiences in um, working in the community and the ways in which our community um, accesses or maybe has trouble accessing some funding when it comes to um, uh, intimate partner violence, violence prevention work, um, family safety. Um, so that was good to sort of provide some of that perspective to remind them what is necessary for our um, for our people to be able to access that and be able to serve ourselves um, and help um, build that network within our own community. Um, and in exchange, we did get some information about some funding opportunities that we're hoping either the office um, might be able to take advantage of in the next year or that we can help facilitate for some of our beneficiaries and beneficiary communities to be able to sort of build those networks and, and get the funding that's needed so we can help help support our, our families and, and our people um, in violence prevention work, um, specifically with regard to women, but I think more generally with regard to Kiki and families. So do, we're happy to take questions offline or whatnot. I know this is the announcement time, but it, we did wanna let you know um, that it was a nice meeting. It was a good meeting, a nice connection, and we look forward to continuing that connection moving forward. Mahalo, Kyoko. Okay, I will now entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. So, so been moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> seconded. Uh, Nathan, can I please have a roll call vote? Trustee Ahuna? Aye. Trustee Aquina? Aye. Trustee Alapo? Aye. Trustee Galaterio? Aye. Board Chair Lindsay? Aye. Trustee Souza? Aye. Board Vice Chair Trask? Aye. Trustee Waihei? Aye. Trustee Waihei? Chair Akaka? Aye. Aye. Eight yes, eight yes votes, motion passes. Mahalo, Nathan. The meeting is now adjourned. Mahalo members, all in attendance and all live streaming. Ohiho. Oh,